I guess the games journalist people are, you know, like they're very mad at that uh, people online. And they're basically like, you guys should, should listen to us. It's time mm-hmm. to listen. It's come, from, from, it's, it's come from the, from the gamer. It's come from the gamer. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's time to start trusting video game reviewers. I get it. Games journalists are terrible at video games. Remember that one guy playing Cuphead? Let's ignore the fact that the games journalists regularly beat entire games in a far shorter time span than regular people who don't have deadlines to meet. Turn a blind eye to the fact that they don't have a single guy to help them beat a difficult boss or access an area with a... uh, uh, abstruse entry method like drinking poison that kills you uh, at any other time. Forget about the fact that they beat them before the patches even arrive. Now, here's the thing. You are paid to make an article. You are paid to beat the game. Regular people have regular shit to do, like working a job, going to school, having a family. Okay, but let's continue. Uh, they also hate video games. And chose to cover this beat because they want to destroy the entire industry. It doesn't matter that wages are low across the sector and crunch is rife. Especially when... Oh my god. And when reviewing 100-hour games with bafflingly tight turnarounds, we hate video games and can't wait to tear them down. All right? So, So basically, if you guys don't know, uh, a lot of... There's a lot of games journalists that are very mad, too, is because they're saying that... Um, Shadow of the Earth Tree, which is the most recent uh, DLC for Elden Ring, is too hard, right? I read an article yesterday saying they're saying that Dark Souls is ruining Shadow of the Earth Tree Elden Ring DLC. Yeah, I didn't watch your segment about that. What, what what's that about? This like did it Elden Ring come from Dark Souls? <laughs> yes, I guess he's. <laughs> I, I read the entire article and then not. It, it feels like they don't know that Dark Souls and Elden Ring are from the same company. <laughs> that's so I, pathetic dude journalist like, you're making Elden Ring into Dark Souls how dare you it sh- the game should not be this hard Ugh, yeah basically that, that in short that was the, what they're complaining about let's see uh, the myth that games journalists not only suck at video games but also actively hate medium is one of the things I've never understood however the issue with game reviews is much uh, easier to parse gaming in 2024 is team based your team Xbox or team PlayStation, team Fortnite or team COD, team Stellar Blade or team censorship, team developer or team journalist. That's how many gamers see it, at least. Uh, there's a major problem with games marketing that feels this feudal misery. Hype trailers for games. <laughs> Years away from a release, whip fans into fervor and excitement heightens into a level where any criticism of the game is seen as personal slight. Calling Stellar Blade's protagonist Eve boring meant that you are part of the pro censorship a woke, woke karate, woke karate, <laughs> woke karate who can't stand beautiful men and uh, uh, leading a game. Oh my god! Okay, I'll throw a bone. To Eve is boring as a character, but in terms of aesthetics, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before we continue, uh, Ogami, how how do you feel about this uh this uh this article so far? Well, he sounds very. I can hear the sneer in his cadence. He's proving yeah. he's proving everything he's saying. He thinks he's saying it tongue in cheek. Oh, well, you think we hate gamers and you think we hate the industry. You do. Mm-hmm. You fucking do. You come out and say it all the time. The games are too white. The games are too male. The games are too this. The games are too that. And anyone who likes it is a problem. We need to change it. We're going to yep. change the industry for the better. And if you don't like it, then you're an istinophobe and you're a problem and you're in the way. And go touch grass and don't play our games. And again... The thing they keep saying this, they keep coming out and saying, "Don't play our games if you don't fucking like it," as if their mm-hmm. terms are unacceptable, as if we don't have choices. Let's say you don't just go and go join an MMA kickboxing gym. Let's say you just want to play games. We have a lot of choices to play. We don't need yep. to play your fucking game. So when you th- th- this and I, I made the sound, I made the horse sound because when they said, "Oh well, it the marketing for this is abysmal. It just whips fans into fervor." They talk as if we have no agency. Again, yep. this guy just betrayed that he sees the gaming community as consumers. Their job is to consume product. If you do not consume the product, you are not doing your job, you lazy piece of shit. Do your job and consume the product. 
What they do don't re- see us as is yeah. customers with choices. Do you remember a couple of years ago? And we talked about this a lot. Now, when I say a couple of years, damn, it's almost been 10 years since this incident. Do you remember this, Ogami? Yes. Mm, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember this. This was the huge issue that they had to change this is because you're sexualizing Tracer. This is one of the victory poses that you can get in the game. And you said you're extremely sexualizing the character. And yes. Okay, sure, whatever. But then you get the actual figure, the actual Tracer statue from Blizzard, officialblizzard.com. Boom. There's the cake. There's people were complaining about bullshit. And these people, like this asshole that's made this dumb article, this this stupid nothing article. And I can't believe he wrote this. They hate this. Yeah. They hate this with the fact that her ass is so nice and clappable. And, and it's like, no, you it's it's sort of like when when I uh, was called again, when Mr. Incredible and the entire family destroyed that um, that the fucking drone and then Syndrome wakes up finding that everyone's cheering for them. They're like, no, what are you doing? Right. So that's the reason why this will never see the light of day in the in the game. Is because you get people who are mad at this, and yep. it's the same type of people who write these articles. And, Bl- yes. and Blizzard fell to DIE woke karate crap long time ago, mm-hmm. and they've been it's been downhill ever since. And here's the other thing that Ka- you mentioned the Capcom poll. One of the things they asked in that poll is who your favorite characters are. All of them are hot, right? And mm-hmm. they and they broke it down by demographic. Even though eighty five percent of the player base is male, male, there was still there was still like ten percent of the player base that are female. And they were able to tell the favorite characters. It was like the guy from Double May Cry. Yep, Dante, both men, both Dante Chun Li. Yeah, all of them both are hot. men and women chose Dante as their favorite character. Why? Because he's for the girls. He's hot. For yeah, the and guys, Leon Kennedy is like second. That. Yeah. So okay. Well, are we all gonna supposed to get bent out of shape because well, those guys don't look like real guys, and my body don't look like that. There's no way I can get a ten pack. Yep. Or do we say fuck that? I gotta hit the gym because that fucking yeah, he he is fucking ripped and he kicks ass. I want to be like that guy. He man yep. was yep. a, was a he man was one of the early big heroes of boys because he was buff, muscular, and could kick ass. That's all we cared about. And yep. it turned out the girls could kick ass too. But so girls can look at fucking a guy who's ripped and shredded, and that's okay. But if boys want to look at a girl, and by the way. Uh, Chun Li was like not even the top five. No, she wasn't. Like, oh, you would think Chun Li would be right up there, but again, they have this caricature of gamers as they're these fucking neck bearded consumers who just like to coom all day. Now that's you, Phil, but that's not everybody. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> but there, there is. It, it's not just a gaming thing. There has been a concerted effort from the Marxists that there has to be a war on what people find beautiful people have always found beauty in things and women traditionally have always been the standard of beauty unless you're in ancient greece where they were all gay and then men were the standard of beauty and it's still the case in west hollywood where men are the standard of beauty if you pick up a phone book in west hollywood you'll find like an ad for a plumber and it's a dude with no shirt with who's ripped with a six-pack so in that environment men are the fucking standard of beauty but with the woke karate's, with the Marxists, the neo Marxists, it's like they can't they can't have standards of beauty, and they constantly wage war against what people find beautiful. Mm-hmm. Because that's a problem. Yep. Everyone has to look the same. Everyone has to be shaped like a potato. Everyone has to have no chin. Everyone has to have a couple of squiggly hair sticking out of their cheeks. They can't have a full beard. That makes you too right wing. Yep. Working out is right wing now, and yep. so. We have to get rid of the ring girls in MMA. We have to get rid of modeling jobs for pretty girls. Only the fat, ugly ones can can work. And it's like, what is this war on pretty girls? What's the, what's this war on beauty? It is a total left wing neo Marxist thing, and games are just one avenue in which they do it. And so, yeah, Tracer, who was never sexualized, she she looks like she's wearing yoga pants. And guess what? If you run as much as she does, you're gonna have a shapely butt, legs, and calves. That's true. That's just what happens. But, right, she, but she, yeah, she never just was sexualized. And then they cut her ass off. And now we can't help but notice when her stature comes out normal. 
Yep. All right, let's continue. Team Elden Ring got mad last week when a couple of reviews said that the game was too... No, it wasn't a couple. It was like half couple. the reviews were negative on Steam charts is because it was, it was too hard for them. It was why bad. isn't there a story mode for this? That's yeah. why. That's why a shift up made it for Stellar Blade. But go ahead, Gray. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing about. I think that's the negatives of Elden Ring being extremely popular. It drawed in a crowd who's like who were never were supposed to play these type of games because it's really not for them, and that's mm -hmm. what kind of hurt hurt the score. But I think it's normal. I think it's back to mostly positive, if I'm not mistaken. I, I haven't checked recently. I should okay. I'll, I'll give it a look. Yeah, yeah. Go and check but, the Steam yeah. charts. Let's see. Um, uh, accusations flew across the Twitter sphere, and the critics behind said reviews were uh, were told in no uncertain terms to get good and suffered far worse abuse. As misogynistic as it was vitriolic, Cuphead has been brought up again. <laughs> Fast forward a week, and the players are leveling uh, the very. No, here's the thing. Do you know what happened? People were saying that it was so fucking hard. Okay, th 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 this 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 is very disingenuous, especially this first paragraph. I mean, it's this middle paragraph yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. That's mostly positive now. Shadow of the Earth. Okay. Do you know why it's mostly positive? There was an update that came out a couple days ago that made it easier. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I think it was. The scattered tree fragments are the things that you're supposed to go around and collect. And that's the thing that boosts your, your, um, your stats to make you on par. You need, according to what I heard, you need a minimum of 10 scattered tree fragments in order for you to even be able to fight the boss solo, right? It's because that, that's the thing. Um, the game isn't meant for you to be to shoot me with a blaze through the game, right? It's like me, like Dark Souls, any blood, uh, Souls born game, Dark, uh, Bloodborne, you know, whatever it is, Sekiro, uh, Demon Souls, all of these games are meant to be hard and challenging. And the thing is that, oh, I'm gonna go into this, 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 uh, DLC using the same build that it used to be Melania. It does not fucking work. All right. My original build that I use does not work currently. Right, because there's a new meta. You're supposed to the game wants you to use and the creators want you to use different builds, right? And the fact that there's an update, the reason why they did it is because people were bitching, right? And now you don't need 10 scattered tree fragments in order for you to be strong enough. Now you only need like six. This is this is extremely disingenuous. And for a person who's still playing the game, so still playing the DLC, I noticed that it's gotten a little easier. Right, the, the, I, I like for me, like the bosses were insanely hard, but yeah. Oh, uh, let's continue. Let's see. Um, all right, right over here. Uh, countless mods have been added to easy modes in the game. One called journalist mode, despite the fact that journalists beat the game without needing it. Sure, I'm pretty sure people that the person who made the Stellar Blade review on IGN beat it on normal mode and not story mode, right? If you need mm -hmm. to get it out fast, right. Players yep. feel bosses are unfair. They believe the systems are too abstruse, and and yet they refuse to engage with some of the game's core mechanics due to believing that there there are cheats way out. I wonder if any of them have apologized to the reviewers who have pointed it out on any issue. Now, here's the thing: uh, the reviewers that I've read, there are some like bug issues, there's like there's some like frame drops issues and stuff like that, and those are all those are all valid. fine. Yeah, those are v extremely valid concerns, but like. If people are saying that's too hard, just get better, man. Asmongold was gonna quit. Yeah, yeah. Was, 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 was... He, he made he made two part react. One one he was kind of shitting on the Elden Ring for being too hard, but mm -hmm. the next one he was like, I I didn't watch the second one, but I know it was going the tone of oh I was wrong. This is actually really good. I, I know yeah. that, was, that was part two. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what happened was that he was fighting Mesmer, and 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 I I, I beat him. Uh, I beat him yesterday. Mesmer is like one of the bosses that you have to beat. It's not optional. You have to beat him in order for you to beat the DLC. Uh, it's not like Melania. Melania was completely optional. Uh, Mesmer is a mid boss. He's like a mid. He, he's a like mid game boss that you need to fight. And the thing is that I, he basically had to switch his build up because his current his previous build didn't work. And that's the actual part. That that's a part of the game that you need to do, right? There's a bunch of games that. Can you go and fight the like? Can you go fight Mesmer right away? Absolutely, but you're gonna get completely destroyed, and that's the reason why the game wants you to go go around searching. It's an open world game. Go collect these scattered scattered tree fragments. You'll get stronger, and by the time you get enough, you feel like go fight the boss again, right? Change your build, and I believe I was even listening to um of all people, Yang Ye. Yang Ye was using his original build from the original game. Did not work against Mesmer. 
what happened? He ended up no, not 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 Mesmer. The big wall of the uh, of the game is not even Mesmer. It's Rilana, which is supposed to be the new Milan uh, Melania. Okay, and I beat that boss before the update came out. I beat that boss before the update. Uh, before the update came out, it took me about an hour and a half to beat that boss. It, it is really hard, but it it's not like Melania, where it took me three hours. The thing is, Yang Ye's build didn't work. What he ended up doing was going with a shield build that actually lets you parry the attacks. And that staggers the enemies a lot quicker. And he ended up completely changing his build and he ended up beating the game. He was able to beat the game with that new build. And that's why you're supposed to try it out, right? And I believe these, this, this is extremely disingenuous, man. But uh, let's continue. Uh, it's not just an Elden Ring problem. When Cali uh, Plague Plagy Plague reviewed Cyberpunk 2077 for Gamespot, she was hounded by thousands of play for pointing out the game's negatives. She didn't like the edgy aesthetics that played in no meaningful part of the gameplay. She was uh, also labeled as prude. She pointed out the offensive depictions of minorities, so she was called an SJW. She probably was, and probably still is. She called the technical issues obvious even on PC, so she suffered a barrage of hatred. <laughs> yeah. You're you are in the no, and here's it's not if it's criticism, it's not hatred. They're not attacking you if they're giving you criticism. And it, I, I think and a lot of these games journalists, they feel like whenever someone critiques their their critique or critiques their feedback. Is considered attacking them, providing, uh, you know, hate, hate speech, right? Like right over here. Uh, plague, I'm putting this plague. Yeah, plague. Okay, we we'll call it plague. Plague was at the receiving end of the whirlwind of abuse from gamers ex uh, excited for CD Projekt Red's new title, eight years into uh, in the making. Their excitement as well as marketing campaign blinded them from seeing fair criticism as exactly that fair. I don't know her, but I imagine Plague was excited to play the game too. Games journalists and critics like games. And yet, her 7 out of 10 reviews spark days of collective outrage. Now, in my opinion, I think CD, uh, CD Projekt Red's um, great. And, and you, you play Cyberpunk, right? A little bit. But I got what went down. I was, what, I was actively watching YouTube at the time. And yeah, uh, it's... It's more of a CD project thing, but I do get why a lot of people were upset with like Skill Up, Young, yeah, the people were pushing Cyberpunk to be like the best thing, the bestest thing since sliced bread. Because when yeah. people got to play it, it was like, oh my god, this is such a dog shit game. What, what and the fuck it happened? was it was like insanely plagued, right? Like, and yeah. you have a bunch of like bugs. Some of the characters yeah. look fucked up. Eric July called it Cyberbug, twenty seventeen. <laughs> But yeah, all right, let's continue. Uh, see, however, uh, when the game released, fans saw the truth for themselves. Just days after Plague's review was published, their post appeared on Cyberpunk subreddit titled, Everyone Talk Shit About Her, But I'm Starting to Agree with Kelly Plague. Uh, on the whole, the review was more positive than the sentiment on subreddit. The fan reaction was so intense that a new subreddit, Low Sodium Cyberpunk, was set up by this minority fans wanting to escape Suave's turning on the game for the exact reasons Plague pointed out. What gives? At what do you start trusting games critics and those who review your games? As much as you think we are different to you, that we have different agendas and want to tear down things you love, we are not. We love video games. We wouldn't do the jobs otherwise, but we have to be honest with our opinions. Now, I think what you're saying is, this person is saying, is not 100% incorrect. I believe yeah. there are they do love video games, and sometimes you get legit good reviewers. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, you know, we don't. But hell no, Hellblade. Hell to the no, Hellblade is a 10 out of 10. I'm not sure what they gave it. Hellblade. What? What? <laughs> I'm the world champion, man. Yeah, it's no. a 10 out of 10. <laughs> so, someone, someone in the chat just said gaslighting. Gaslighter is gaslighting. Yeah. Yep. This person has redirected the situation as, oh, the problem that peep, the gamers have with us is that sometimes we don't agree. And so you need to fucking chill out and relax. That's not the problem we have with you, game journals. The problem we have with you is that 10 years ago, you were exposed for fucking Zoe Quinn and giving her shit good reviews. And when people pointed it out, you started attacking us and you never fucking stopped. That was Gamergate 1. And then Gamergate mm -hmm. 2 happened just recently, and it was the same shit. You attack us 
constantly. You always say that we're the fucking problem, just like you're saying in this article right now. We are the problem, not you. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? You're the one who's fucking just admitted that you're not paid shit. And the reason you're not paid shit is because we don't fucking need you. We don't buy your stuff. We have people that we watch online. Phil's one of them. Gray's another. But we have a lot of people online who we actually can sit there and watch them play the game and get much more entertaining reviews and better reviews than your stupid ass writing an article. And when we point it out and we tell you that, you tell us we're a bunch of ists and phobes and we need to do better and you need to, we need you, you need to trust us, bro. Fuck you. I refuse. No. What is mm -hmm. what does Doomcock always say? Without respect, we reject. You disrespected us for fucking years. We reject you. And now your ass is out of a job. And then the ones who are left in a job are getting paid a pittance, which is exactly what you deserve. Yep, so no, absolutely. I feel yep. nothing for you. It's not that we don't agree with you. It goes way deeper than that for way longer than that. And you fucking know it. Yep, and uh, and you have the whole Anita Sarkeesian stuff, and it's like, oh, you know, sexualizing characters and yada yada yada, and and then um, what happens? Like, one Stellar Blade is the highest rated PS5 game. Yeah, yeah. I, there's so eight, this, this there's this narrative spreading that one million sales on Stellar Blade for the PS5 alone is a is a bad thing. It's not. It, it's if it's nuts, if it's multi platform on every single platform, yes, it's bad. Yeah, but it's but it's not. System. It's on yes. PS Five, my PS Five. One of the the console that a lot of people still don't have. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and finish this out. Let's see. Uh, let me see. So find someone with similar opinions to you. Wow, your uh, Euro gamers uh, reviewers found the DLC so difficult that spoiled their experience. Our reviewer uh, relished from software seemingly unsurmount uh, insurmountable challenge. I myself play and review a lot of RPGs, text-heavy games, because I'm a book nerd at heart. If you, too, like those sorts of uh, games and welcome valid criticism of the genre, keep tabs on my open... Cri of course, you, that, you, no, you gotta shill. No, fuck you. Here's you gotta shill. you, asshole. If you want us to keep tabs... Let's say you're one of the good ones. I'll give it to you. I'll grant you this. You're one of the good critics. Start a fucking channel. Get on Twitch. Get on whatever the fuck. I don't even know what the channels are, but get on one of them and start doing it on your own. You don't need to work for the fucking Eurogamer. You don't yep. need to work for One Up or whatever the fucking these trash journalist sites are. If you are such a great critic that you're on our side and you actually love games and want to see them do well, and you're not bothered by the difficulty level, then why are you working for them? Why are you wasting your time writing? Start a channel and what and have us watch you play. Mm -hmm. That's all you gotta fucking do. And the thing is that they're. The reason why this article also is coming out at this time is because they're, they're, this is happening with movies and TV shows for a while now. I think now game uh, there's a lot of people online that are doing game reviews that are that, that's probably putting them out of the job. right? Yeah. That's why a lot of these, uh, these big corporate like media companies, they're afraid of reviewers, especially YouTube reviewers, like you know drinker, Nerdrotic, geeks and gamers, yeah, you know anyone that, the best gamer. Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the fact that you have someone that's like giving like actual like criticism of, uh, you know, Doctor Who, uh, Game of Thrones, you know, uh, like everything that's coming out that, that we consume, that we pay for, that we use our hard earned money to pay money. for. Exactly. It's like, of course, we're going to listen to these people that we agree with. Right. If Drinker says a show sucks and we majority of the time we listen to him and we agree with most of the stuff, it will probably suck, right? Some, but the thing is that, are there times where Drinker or Neurotic, they may be wrong? From time to time, but potentially, but most of the time, their takes are pretty, we're pretty aligned on takes. Yeah. And that's the reason the why they're afraid of YouTubers and video game reviewers and movie reviewers that all, they're all on YouTube because the thing is that no one's going to come to your crappy website anymore, right? And, and that's the reason why this person has to make this um, argument saying that, why, why, you know, basically we're here, the same thing. It's time to start trusting video game reviewers. Okay, how about we trust video game reviewers that are on YouTube and not your, your shitty ass website? Yeah, you know what's great about YouTube reviewers is that they'll actually sit there and play the game and you can watch them. Yep. So yeah, hello, do live streams. I do that. So Gray does live streams. We can sit there and actually watch you play the game and we can decide for ourselves. And your streams will be an hour, two hours, three hours. We can go to any point in the game and say, you know, this game actually looks really good. And you will hear your commentary over it. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. And we can decide. 
I actually bought Helldivers 2 based on fucking watching our favorite nerds play it. I had no interest in playing Helldivers 2. But then mm -hmm. I saw Az playing it, and I saw Beardo playing it, and I saw everyone get X-Ray Girls playing it. And I was like, you know, this game actually looks pretty kick-ass. I should go give yeah. it a shot. And I never, and now I'm still playing it. And so it's like, I, when Space Marine 2 is coming out, I will watch the gameplay footage of people, of game channels that I like and I watch, and I'll just watch them play, and I'll decide. I'm not going to fucking read The Gamer or Kotaku or any of these fucking trash sites. I'm going to actually watch people playing it in real time. And I, I say the same to this thing to this author of this fucking trash article. If you are the exception to the rule of shitty games journalists, which are right up there with science journalists as being fake news, if you're one of the good ones, quit. Mm -hmm. Go start a channel. If you are really that good, you will get a million followers and you will make money based on the, the amount of views you get. Asmund yep. Gold, I don't agree with half his fucking takes. I think he's yep. half half wrong all the time. But yep. when it comes to video games, I'll still listen to him because yeah. he has pretty decent takes. I disagree yeah. with him half the time, disagree with him other half the time. But you know what I can't deny? The guy's a fucking multimillionaire. Why? Because he fucking started a channel and his reviews are on for everyone to watch and he has millions yep. of viewers. Yep. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and finish this out. Let's see. This is how to navigate the media landscape. Find someone your taste is lined with for whose criticism enjoying uh enjoy reading. Find your Roger uh Roger Ebert. Uh, ju uh don't just look at the biggest uh, reviews on the biggest uh all right. See, don't that means don't go to the gamer or Kotaku, basically, <laughs> or our, our IGN. Uh, because you lack the important context about the person behind the webpage. Uh, you can expect their review to be balanced and fair, but it will also be entirely subjective. Reviews no. are opinions after all, so you need to dig a little deeper and understand whether this is a perspective uh, that is similar to yours. If your favorite reviewer writes an independent, uh, z z independent zine, uh, go for it. That might be more valuable than you, than IGN or the Gamer write-up. Exactly. I, I, I agree with that paragraph. For Look sure. at this fucker explaining how to consume product. Here's how yep. you explain. Of course we agree with it. We already fucking know this. Let, here, let, let, by the way, he spelled favor with a U, so he's a fucking Brit. He's, <laughs> you can hear, you can hear, you hear his uh, English accent. Let me explain to you mud people how to properly consume my product. What you do is this, this, and this. Yeah, we already fucking know. And you know what we did? We read your shit. We decided it was crap, and we don't read it anymore. We've already done it. And now you're mm. telling us, well, you got to come. you got to come back and trust us. No, we followed your steps. Yep. And by the way, they're not your steps. They're our steps. We already know how to do this. We don't need you to fucking explain it to us. We read your article. We think it's trash. We're moving on. We're not going to fucking read you anymore. Any, anything else you'd like to explain and teach us? Oh, great fucking Harvard or what is it? No, Oxford Games Journal <laughs> with your fucking you in the favor. Favor yeah. it. Yeah, okay, Brit. Okay, uh, but no games journalist is out to get you. Uh, that is uh, completely untrue. Um, um, Alyssa Mercanti. I just I just debunked Ugh. your entire sentence. Alyssa Mercanti is one of them, all right? The vast majority try to be fair in their criticism and unbiased when it comes to unconsequential arguments like console preferences. Okay, to be I I think PC is the best, but um but yeah. in terms of consoles, um I think I think PS5 is winning in just in general. But uh, nobody's uh, going to give Astrobot a 2 because they love Xbox. Nobody is going to is trying to destroy game developers' lives. We're honest. We're opinionated. We're human, just like you. But there are shitty humans, though. Like this. Like I can't believe this is an actual article. And then it's the first comment. You really wrote this article. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, the, the, like half of the entire thing was like extremely like disingenuous and extreme of course it, it is biased because this is, this is an opinion i'm assuming this is an opinion but the thing is yes uh sometimes games journalists purposely like oh you know um the controversy with stellar blade and eve's look the controversy of jiggle physics the controversy of hot women oh asterian from Baldur's gate 3 yes let's have him fuck a bear it's completely asinine, and it's stupid that they're even comparing this kind of stuff. But, uh, Gray, how do you feel about uh, this article that we just read? While I yeah. pull up a, a really fantastic example of why Stellar Blade is creating a lot of great shit, including awesome cosplay. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw this one in your tweet. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that's really real good. girls aren't built like that. No, this is, this, is not, this is not real. This is AI. Some, somebody please tell my fucking IG feed that real girls aren't built like that. That's all I fucking get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so Gray, yeah. How, how do you feel about the article? Yeah, it's I. there's nothing more I can probably expound on what you, you and Dan already you and Ogami already said, but uh, yeah, we can only hope that things are. I can see signs of correcting itself. So I do know that Craig from Side Scrollers applied for editor in chief for Kotaku. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if he makes it in, that would be really interesting. Actually, <laughs> he makes it in, he shuts it down. <laughs> yeah, you're all fired. I, you're all fired, dude. And, and I'm gonna apply. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna, try. I'm gonna freaking try, man. If that really happens. But is it was it is it Mercanti editor in chief? So they're like, is this no, she's like a she, she's like a senior editor. She, That's lower right than an editor. Yeah, uh, yeah, a, a editor in chief is the one who gets final say on everything. It's basically mm -hmm. you're it's basically CEO of like the it's not the company but CEO of the oh, the, the journalism that's being done. Oh, imagine imagine if he makes it in that would be really cool. Maybe there'll be yeah. a resurrection for Kotak with a brand. But anyway, yeah. Uh yeah, very disingenuous, and you always take the angle of your ideology, your messaging. It's never, it's hardly about the game with these journalists, mm -hmm. and yeah, but just, I mean, I, I, my second channel is proof, right? I've been getting like, I talk about the game, I criticize the game, and it's surprising, it's gaining traction, even though it's like Dragon Age Two, I did not expect it to hit that ballpark of exceeding 1k but it did mm -hmm. it's like it's a game that's in 2011 a game that came out in 2011 that and I, I just talk about the good the good things about a game and why people hate it back then and why people don't like it now and mm -hmm. just talk, just be genuine just talk about the game don't insert your ideology and your politics in it and yep. you I, you'll do fine you'll yeah do that's fine. how it should be it's it's because they they let their um their their basically their their dogma they let their religion of uh, wokeism get uh, interfere with actual journalism, right? If a game sucks, why does it suck? Be objective about it, right? Don't 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 be like be bipartisan. And of course, like these people can't do that, right? They 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 feel like they they can't do it, and that's the reason why they they, they feel like okay, I need to write in why um Abby is the best video game character from uh The Last of Us Two. It's or, or, or some garbage, right? Why why it's why it's okay to sexualize uh Ryu from Street Fighter Six and why you should do it too. Some some garbage like that from like fucking Stacey Henley or, or some shit like that, right? A lot of these they just don't get it. Right. If they actually like IGN 30% of the time they, they come out with like unbiased reviews. But most of the time, it's like extremely biased. Is because you hire all of these activists, right? You get activist uh, writing. You get you're gonna get activist articles, and it's just that simple. Uh, Ogami, how how do you feel about this uh, this article? Well, he's fucking lying. His he, he ends the article with with again another gaslight, saying, "No, we actually like games. We love games. We love the industry." No, you fucking don't. You know why? Because all you talk about, and by you I mean all of you, the journalist fucking industry. All you talk about is fixing it, improving it. It's broken now. It's problematic. It's too sexist. It appeals to the male gaze. It's too masculine. There's too many men. There's too many white people. It doesn't have enough this. It doesn't have enough checkboxes. All you talk about is trying to fix it to match your stupid utopia. That's this crazy DIE fucking certified Marxist thing. Mm -hmm. You don't do that to something you love. OK, it's just like with Star Wars. It's just like with Willow. It's just like with Rings of Power. It's all these things that, oh, we're huge fans of this. Leslie the Head Headland said that Star Wars has saved her life. She she loves all of it. But let me fix it. Let me change this. I'm going to change the very nature of the force. I'm going to tell my dumbass actors who are also not fans that there's no such thing as good and evil in this universe. <laughs> when literally the fundamental <laughs> story is light versus dark. So. Yeah. You don't love something if you want to change the fundamental uh, nature and core of what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like me saying, I love Harry Potter, but you know what? I'm not a fan of magic. So I'm going to do a remake of Harry Potter, and they're all going to be fucking scientists. And they're all going to 
work on nuclear physics and quantum mechanics. And instead of riding brooms, they're going to ride hovercrafts. And I change every single fucking thing about it that makes it the core of what it is. Is that something you do to something you love? Or is that something you do that you that you actually don't care about at best? I don't care about it. I want to tell my own story, so I'm going to fucking make this fit into my story. And yep. at worst, you not only hate the thing you're working on, which all these game journalists actually don't like being game journalists. They want to be bigger journalists. This is just a stepping stone to them to become either a Hollywood writer or an actual journalist. So they don't give a fuck about this job, and they certainly don't give a shit about games because all they can talk about is the stuff they do care about, which is – diversity inclusion and equity thanks for checking out this segment of the project egg row podcast if you like what we do here please like share subscribe hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live we do go live every saturday at 8 p.m once again we are just getting started tons of more video to come thanks and we'll see you guys next time